very suspicious. When I sponged in the watch on. Yep. It is a very nice sponge. Another uh, sponge in the subfamily Bolosomini. Last sponge on a stock in the family Euplectality. We're starting to switch up here, but one last question for me. Um, there seem to be a lot of eels or long bodied fish. Is there an evolutionary benefit? Uh, for that sort of body type at this depth? Absolutely. So having that long eel-like body form is very advantageous to saving energy while swimming. So life down here in the deep sea is relatively slow. Uh, you never know when your next meal is going to be. So it's good to conserve energy. So that's why a lot of the fish that we're seeing have that long eel-like body form because that's the most efficient way to swim. All right, and I'm going to have one more joke before we leave. What do you call an aquatic social network? Fish what? book. Oh. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. And uh, we Good are night. going to turn over to the next watch.
SPL check. I hear you loud and clear. Copy that, thank you. Hello, back row. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. How are we all doing? Uh, geez, since we're here, let's look at the <laughs> seafloor. <laughs> Might as well, yeah. Came all this way. <laughs> Might as well. To start off, I'd like to pick up uh, that rock there. <laughs> ah, yes. The jokes have started early, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool, cool jokes in there, huh? Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So we're near waypoint eight. The ship is paused. Would we like to hang out here or just continue up the ridge? No, let's keep moving. Okay. Roger, roger. You are facing 225 is a wall to your port. So let's go. Let's go 195. Fill that out for a bit. Just kidding. 190. 190, Raj. Bridge now. Good evening. Can we step 100 meters bearing 190, speed 0 0.2? Thank you. So the rough plan for the next little while is to just keep moving up this slope, making observations. We're looking to collect the next rock sample at about 2380, so 2380. 100 meters up from here. So somewhere around that 602 point, 60215 I just dropped. Did you just put that there or was that already there? I just dropped it. Oh, nice. I just counted the contours ish. So that'll be about two ship moves. We'll get there. Figure we'll go at point two up this steeper bit, and if we need to for time purposes or the next watch, they have a less steep bit here towards the summit that they could go a bit faster on. Um, I haven't done the math, but Aaron was saying that uh, it seems like if we keep things paced pretty well, we can definitely make the first summit and uh, maybe even the second by 6 a.m or off bottom. Raj, what's the distance there? Any is like 2K? To the first summit. From where we are now, roughly uh, to 2.2. Okay. And then from that to the next summit, which may involve a brief sec section of downhill, another 1.2. Okay. So. You said 2.2 .2 kilometers, or nautical miles? Kilometers. Kilometers. Yeah. So that, if we went straight there at 
point two would be six hours ish, six and a half hours, which is plenty of time <laughs> to get to the first one. Yeah. And how's our sampling besides that rock? Are we pretty full up on stuff or just kind of waiting for a spectacular no. bio or? Uh, we're not very full. We got a few things in the forward bio box B, but nothing in A. Okay. Um, and then the three starboard boxes are open, um, but we do need three more rocks still. I see uh, we've got something sticking out of the starboard <laughs> bio. <laughs> that is the sponge. Oh, right. And yeah. uh, how about the slurps? Uh, we got two full. Two full. Okay. So we're going to do some slurping on ours as well, yeah? Drive by slurps, Hopefully. it sounds like. <laughs> Everybody slurps. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 wow. Four minutes in. Was, was that Dave, Dave or Adam? Who's taking credit for that one? I, I, I That's a mystery, isn't it? Yeah. I thought it was an Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <Yep. laughs> It's a duet, it's a duet right? Yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> As in, please don't duet again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yes. beautiful. Deep. Nice. You see, Justin, we didn't have to kind of debate what that meant. That <laughs> oh, <laughs> shots fired at the front row. Yeah, you're right. Five <laughs> minutes in. Pretty it's going to be a long shift. We don't get any more rock samples. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these just seem all cemented. <laughs> yeah. It's really not worth trying. Yeah. Arm, arms broken. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're going zero nine zero. Heading down. <laughs> so you think we're on the kind of the north side of this ridge that fit with where you're seeing the slope and the sonar? I think so, yeah, the northwest side of it. And I've put in a move to be it's hard to say how much of the how continuously linear that ridge is or if there's chunks, but yeah. yeah, certainly the one next to us is to our port side, so we're on the north northwest side of it. But put in a move a little more southwards to hopefully Get up towards the top of it. But it doesn't look too tall, actually. You can see stuff behind it. Mm -hmm. Jess, could we zoom on that little thing right there? Yeah, the little sponge-looking fellow thing. Yeah. I'm going to say it's an old holdfast. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what it looks like. Dave, go ahead and push on in there, please. Hmm. Now I don't know. It looks kind of alive. You know? No, I think it's old hold fast still. I don't know. It does look alive. It's like it's broken on the top there. C can't tell. Yeah, it does look like it's torn off the stock there. Yeah. Maybe it's freshly ripped off. Maybe. All right, full wide there, please, Dave. Oh, that big uh, soft coral there. Mm. Yeah, sticking out. <clears throat> now, can we just go octocoral anytime we see something like that? <laughs> sure. In you a surprised voice or soft octocoral? <laughs> <laughs> We don't want to do that with basalt, right? Because then that'd just be right. Whole watch. <laughs> be wrong. Go ahead and push on there, please, Dave.
That one so doesn't look very mushroomy. Yeah, is, no. that, is that a polyp that's pulled in, or is that like a wound? Can't tell. No, I'm not sure. Really a different. Hmm, interesting. Go ahead and come wide there, please, Dave. That's a different one. So who's the leader of the hive train tonight? <laughs> is it Rennie or is it Adam? I can pass the <laughs> the whistle on to someone else. Oh, um, all right, Adam. Okay, leading the hype train. <laughs> Look at these rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it is slightly different kind of morphology around here. They're, they're, or at least what we just went through, big old boulders assume pillows that have mm -hmm. kind of detached and rolled down the hill. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know if maybe other watches did, but I don't recall seeing this on the last little peak anywhere on that. No, and I mean, maybe if we got down and tried to pick up something, we'd find it's all cemented together, but it looks like there's a lot more loose stuff around here. All right, Adam, what is that? That's a Ritigorgia. Oh, nice. Wow. That's a Ritigorgias. Your oh, hype train oh voice yeah. is very <laughs> Oprah-like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you get it, Rita Gorgia. <laughs> All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. You know, some people say that the idea for the corkscrew actually came from this very coral. He's just... Back Did you there. make that up? <laughs> Maybe. This is called propagating false news. Already derailed the hype train. <laughs> Where are our fact checkers? <laughs> Good and come partial wide there, Dave. Oh, Roger. Actually, it's anyone's game right now. You can. Just trying to get you a better view of the corkscrew. I mean, does anyone else know where the corkscrew came from? Mm. See, now he's trying nope. to battle his. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they Create claims, false claims. <laughs> Someone asked if this is a penguin, a stuffed penguin. It's my mug, but is I wish it was a stuffed penguin. <laughs> <laughs> How did someone see it? On satellite feed three. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Hey, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> we had a viewer asking how long are the shifts? They are four hours long. We have four hours on, four hours, and eight hours off. 
and then repeat. ROV pilots, can someone answer a question? Yep. Yeah, we can. How often does Hercules need maintenance and what are priority issues to look out for? Um, we do maintenance before and after every dive. Um, and then also uh, a lot of maintenance in the off season. Um, and uh, so before and after dives, um, we prep the vehicles. Uh, we check all of our connectors, uh, all of our um, hydraulic bits. We got to fill reservoirs with oil. Uh, we run through every piece of equipment, um, check it's it's connected electrically to um, our control van, um, uh, and we make sure we're getting data from all of our sensors, um, and basically uh, check every single every single piece of equipment on the vehicle. One of the cool things to watch the ROV team do is go through their pre-dive checks, kind of a, a checklist that's been developed over time to make sure to head off any problems before they start. Go around and check all the bits and bobs and before putting the thing in the water. And it's actually, you know, also amazing to watch them launch and recover the vehicles. It's a pretty complicated operation especially with the you know the two vehicles going in uh, and they do a really excellent job both kind of keeping everyone safe and doing it in a really controlled way so kudos to the front row hey thank you thank you hype train yeah. <laughs> riding the kindness caboose <laughs> <laughs> There's and also our fishing. navigator also does a lot of the launch and recoveries as well. Yeah, launch and recoveries. Mr. Rennie. Have a, we also have a pre-dive and post-dive kind of checklist to make sure all our spatial information is in line. Yeah. My pre-dive check is, do I have snacks? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all That's right, an Dave, important one. Go ahead also and start necessary. pushing on in there, please. Video has a pre-dive checklist as well. We overlap with uh, ROV. Yeah. And, uh, make sure that the uh, that we have control over the cameras. We see video from all the cameras on the vehicles, uh, and then we go through our own pre-dive checklist about uh, recording, time synchronization, closed caption insertion, all of that kind of stuff to make sure that we're capturing all the data that's generated. Looks like a bunch of parasites on the fins of that yeah. fish. Yeah. Sorry, I'll get you a better view. And a great view of the botryoidal texture and the manganese crust behind it. Oh. Can we maybe Come full wide, please? Is uh look at those white bits on the bottom of the rock? Oh, yeah, sure, sure thing. Go ahead and push back on in there, Dave. The white bits. I'm searching for a coral that Steve really wants. I'm trying to earn another gold star. Are these the bits you're talking about? Uh, a little to the right. A little to the right, Reg. Are they really small? Yeah. Roger. Oh. The ones that are on the botry little texture? Yeah. Are you those need to sit down and get a better view? Those little baby corals? I don't know. Go ahead and come full wide there, please, Dave. I'll get us a little better view here. I'll have to catch up. All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there. Might be occluded by a shadow. Jake, you want to watch that sonar for me, please? Yep. Yeah, it's too shadowed, huh? I'll also have to pick up and go, guys. Looks like hydrozoa. Yeah, no worries. Okay, thank you. Full wide. That's my that's my guess. I think we might be too shallow anyway, but right. 
We're going to go a little turbo modey here for a minute. One of our viewers is wondering if the ROVs have batteries or emergency situations. Oh, well, we have emergency beacon or flashers, rather. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are battery operated. Um, yeah, USBLs are too. USBLs, yeah. They have reserve batteries to operate um, in case of any failure to emergency. So no, they wouldn't be. We wouldn't be able to operate them, but we would be able to find them. Fingers crossed. Alright, everybody wants to know our favorite ocean creatures. Should we pair that with introductions? Sure. Ooh, yes. Sounds good. Sh should I be you, Renny? <laughs> <laughs> I'll start off. Uh, Adam Sewell. I'm a professor at University of Rhode Island, director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, uh, which through NOAA is the sponsor for this expedition. And my favorite sea creature is, uh, I don't know, yeah, purple holothurian. Oh. Nice. What do you know? <laughs> there it is. How ironic. <laughs> we see how this game goes. <laughs> Sarah? <laughs> Sarah Bremer, uh, geologist, sitting in the data logger chair. I think um, I'm going for non-deep sea tonight, and I'll go with the narwhal. That's my favorite. Oh, Ooh, nice. very nice. Ooh. Going up. Pretty good return there. Renato, Hi, buddy. Renato Kane, navigator, and um, and seafloor mapper. And yeah, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll also continue the trend of not quite favorite, but I did see the mahi-mahi today, and that Ooh. was really vibrant in the water. So that was really cool. So favorite today. Dr. Sandoval. Oh, hello. Um, maybe come back to me uh, just as we get over this wall here. But maybe Dave wants to go. Sure. Uh, Dave Robertson. Uh, I'm the lead video engineer for this uh, leg and sitting in the video seat uh, on the 8 to 12 shift. Um, my favorite thing of all time, I think, is Dumbo octopus. I've seen several different kinds of them, but the first one that I saw uh, was in 2005, and it just blew me away. It's the goofiest, coolest Ooh. looking animal under the sea. There's a precious coral. Yeah. Beautiful. Very tall. Yeah. Very tall wall. This yep. wall is Keeps awesome. Oh, that's cool, Sponge. Oh, yeah. There's more precious coral. For a lot of these critters, being on a wall like this is the ideal spot. It's the currents can move up the wall and bring all the food to them. <laughs> I'll go next. I'm Lisa Ball. I am a science communication fellow. So send me your questions. And um, I am from Kansas. I'm a science teacher. And... Might leave the mantis shrimp behind and 
go for the green sea turtles. They're so beautiful. Mm. I've gotten to see them lay eggs on land, and I've gotten to snorkel where they're hanging out with you like your best friend. Just really beautiful. There we go. Argus is clear of it. Yeah. <laughs> Surprising wall. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> like a like a mound. Yeah. Wall mound. Might get to our target depth a lot quicker than we <laughs> <laughs> Adam, one of our one of our viewers is asking, "What creates a wall like we are passing right now?" Well, that's a very good question. So, um, this wall is made up of pillows. These are type of lava flow that forms in the ocean when the crust around the lava works really effectively to stop it from moving and create kind of a, a balloon, sure. and then a new pillow emerges. And that type of lava flow is really effective at building tall structures. Uh, and so this wall here, you can see some of the pillows have broken off. So there's some amount of material that's landslided, if you will, off the side. Mm -hmm. But uh, but this ridge that we're on is probably made of, of pillows, which uh, have a propensity to build pretty tall structures in the sea. Wow, look at Let's that take one. take a look at this guy. What do you think that coral is, Sarah? I think it's a permanoid, but I uh, do look closer. Could be bamboo. Ooh. That purple crinoid, I think, is on our hit list. I don't know, Jess, if you have any uh, capacity to stop. A little bit out of time, but we can stop we the ship and yeah, back we it can, up. We can stop. Yeah, I think that's, that's one that we want to get. Why don't you set up with the slurp real quick? Yeah, slurp, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and push on in there a bit there, please, Dave. Bridge nav. Jake, go ahead and get okay. the Hold position. Bamboo. Bamboo core. Bamboo core. Bamboo. Would this be a slurp? I'm, yeah. I'm happy to slurp it. I mean, I'm happy we're to have happy you guys slurp, slurp it. it. <laughs> I think we're okay slope wise to go a little bit on the other side. So we got a little bit of time. But go and come full wide there, please, Dave. One sec there, Jake. I'm going to push us all the way back and they're pan and tilt. All right, pull right back. Do, do, do. While you're doing that, I'll give us a flush. Sarah, did you get a good, uh, good idea of the, or a good screenshot of what it was on? In case we have to jet right after. Uh, yes, Kay. I think so. I think this is a Xenobatridae sathirometra. Uh, I think, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> that one's gradational so color. Wh what bucket do we want to go to? Um, slurp so open are three, four, five, six, and seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, Raj. There we go. Nice. Stuck that way, so we're gonna go to seven. All right, All right Jake, I'm ready when you are. All right. Okay, also ready. A closer. Let's just go ahead and start turning on suction now, so I don't have to do it later. I think this one will be a, yeah, maybe not. They're very delicate, so I don't want too much suction, or the legs will fall, arms will fall off. 
Raj, this is 50 then. Here. Go ahead and push on in a little bit there, please, Dave. That's great. Nice. Oh, oh no. nice. yeah! Oh, wide, please. And the tube. And the tube. Going up. So it's going to be 063 now. 063, Roger. Uh, I'm going to get there out. There he is. Yeah. All right. Zeroed now. There you go. Nice. Yeah. All Looks right. pretty we'll intact. Change it around. 2398. Depth. Purple crinoid. All right. Nice. All right, looks like, yeah, if you just jet out ahead, we'll be safe. Raj. Well Quite. done. Yeah, that was great. Good job, Jake. Were Ed? you guys not on the bottom when you did that? No, oh, we were nope. flying and Jake was nipping. Nice. That's what we call grab and go. Grab and go. <laughs> yeah. Adam, a question for you. Have you ever found any fossils in the deep sea? Uh, I have not, but I believe the ship uh, Nautilus and Hercules have. Mm -hmm. uh, I generally work in volcanic terrains where fossilization is not a common process, but... Uh, this uh, vessel and vehicle found uh, yeah. mini woolly mammoth tusk, I believe, and some uh, whale bones that have been fossilized. Um, so the ship has stopped. We have a bit of swing in Argus, and we are at 2395 meters going up. And you said yeah, 2380? I, I think this is a good place to grab the next rock sample. Okay. So I think Argus probably has another 15 meters of swing. Hopefully we'll get around about the depth, or do you want to bump it a bit closer? No, I mean, it's, you know, this depth is totally fine. Plus okay. I see lots of great candidates for samples. Sounds good. So you say we're going to catch up to Argus a little bit, or is this kind of the area we can work in? Uh, yeah, no, I think Argus probably is moving forward another 10 meters, but we're, we're in the zone of okay. being able to look for stuff. It's a pretty benign slope up ahead, so Argus isn't going to slam into anything. Do you like what you see here? Yeah, I like what I see, kind of dealer's choice on any of the 10 centimeter size oh, rocks. Nice. I think we do need to fit it in one of the smaller boxes, so keep that in mind. Correct. Roger. Yeah, let's try. Let's try up here. We have a viewer who's asking if we ever see anglerfish at this depth, and our favorite fish, Chonicops, is one of the anglerfish, <laughs> also known as the sea toad. This Fingers crossed we'll get to see one. It's a kind of gaper angler. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Oh, these look cemented to you guys. Yeah, they do. Rad, rad. Except down Close. in the lower right. Lower right. All right, Jake, you want to get the arm out again? Yeah. Is it one of the, this one over here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a few here like that, that, 
Okay. Oh, nice. First try. That's great. You want us to look at it before we stow it? Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Can you get it up in the lasers at all? Yeah. Where are they? Perfect. Nice. Thank you. Uh, the A, B, and C starboard are open. Okay. Roger that. Full wide, please. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that critical. <laughs> All right. Give so. that piece back. <laughs> do, do, do. Ready? Yep. I'm going to do a quite slight bump out, make sure this. Sponge. Does it float away? Yeah, I heard it's supposed to be sinky. <laughs> all right. You're all good there, Jake? All right. So they said A, B, and C. Correct. Try C. Try C. Roger. It's a little bit of a harder group to yeah. put the rock in there this way. Nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh. So, 064 sample. 064. Yep. Did posit. There we go. Nice. That's the seamount karma from how difficult it was to get that one earlier. Yeah. Maybe don't stir the manip yet in case we need to push this sponge around. Do we need a um we need a Niskin. Niskin, yeah. yeah. One, two, and three are open for a Niskin. Okay. Sorry, Jake. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know if it's gonna snap snap it though. Yeah. Sturdy those sponges are. What was it? One, two, and three? Yeah, one, two, three. Oh, sorry, right. let me get the right. Blue is three. Popped. Popped. Right. Yeah. Uh, was that three? That was three. Nice. All right. Just want to keep moving along? Moving along. Nicely done. Trying to see what angle we want to go now. Go two zero zero. Two zero zero, Reg. Bridge now. I say, well, Jake. One hundred meters bearing two zero zero. Rock. Thank you.
Very cool little bonnet. So that purple crinoid we collected, was that because it had not been collected before, or? It was like Pac-Man. I, be I believe so. I mean, I think this list is things that have been seen but not collected and, you know, described taxonomically or genetically. Ooh, what are those things sticking out on the stalk? Ooh. Those little hydroids? I don't know. An at the it's like an oh my gosh. It's like a war zone. Kind of a takeover. <laughs> like a sponge with a mask on. <laughs> looks like a Venus flytrap. Yeah, yeah it does. I think it might be one of those. Venus flytrap, yeah. Go ahead and push on in there a bit there, please, Dave. They look like hard hydroids, solitary hydroids to me, but yeah. I also don't know if there's any kind of worm that looks like that. No, I think those are hydroids. Quite a little colony of them. Yeah. Or collection of them. Oh, look, is that is that one big anemone, or is that two that have kind of? Looks like one. Looks like one. One big. It's like yeah. kind of yeah. wrapped yeah. it up. Strange. Venus flytrap anemone. Yeah, the way it's like kind of wrapped around there. That's the other. biggest one we've seen that holds on to a branch like that. Yeah. Like it's impaled almost, even though it's definitely grew around it. Does. It. it does look impaled. Good current. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. Are you feeling it flying? Yeah. I'm at a higher joy gain right now. You can see the current actually pretty nicely in these guys. All right, full wide there, please. Let's see, so if it's moving from right to low. It's moving from 270 to 1 to 90 or so. The current. Yeah. <coughs> How does that match up with your deep sea current models? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this one's coming from west to east. This one's gusting. West to east? Uh, yeah. That does not match. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I'm thinking about this, these internal waves and even though you would think Get everything move, would be constant to the down here. Swirly model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely some eddies. Space and time. Actually here's a good indicator. Let's see. Hmm. Looks like it's pushing you back. Yeah. So watching the D V L track here, it looks like uh, the current is going east, south, east, northeast, but mostly east. All right. Let's test it again a little further on. See if it's sure thing. We have a viewer asking how to pronounce the name of our expedition. <laughs> Should we all give it a try? Uh -huh. I need to. I can't Ooh, do it without seeing it. In front <laughs> of me. Very good. What's the last part? <laughs> We're trying. 
And the meaning of that it is um, it represents the journey to and the work in the sea ridges of the Chautauqua Seamounts. The, the little okina, which is the apostrophe, is meant to give you a kind of a little stop there, like lu-u, lu-u, yeah. Like pu-u, oh oh Fortunately, in the, in the volcanology world, the, most of the, <laughs> the names are a lot shorter. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> but the shortest being the type of lava flow called ah-ah. Uh -uh. So this is different than the ET sponge we had seen before, right? Different Aww, colors. I thought it was oh, color like wise. Yeah, I think it's still an ET one though. Golden push ET. on in there a bit, please, Dave. I don't know how big the ET classification is, if it's a single sponge or if it's just a name for a mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. That's a good point. The little kind of structure they have inside looks stochastic, you know? random structure. Not the most stable of shots for you guys. Pull away, please. We have a viewer asking about the bright colors that we're seeing at this depth, which is kind of interesting since there's no light. And Steve's talked about that a little bit, that it could be an evolutionary trait that was retained from its more shallow dwelling ancestors. And it could also have something to do with the toxins. He was mentioning is pretty quickly after the specimens are preserved in ethanol, that color just kind of comes out in the ethanol. Yeah, he indicated they're volatile organic compounds, which, um, as Lisa said, leach out really quickly when they're preserved. but uh, may be part of their defense mechanism. Steve always indicates that there's kind of an invasion of the deep sea from shallower dwelling creatures. As a deep sea homer, I, I want to believe that they went the other way, mm -hmm. but uh, Steve knows much better than I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think from what I understand is that it went the other way and then came back. So it started oh. deep, went up, went up. Well, one of the theories is it started deep where life began and then spread out and then the shallow dwellers went back and adapted to the deep. At least that's what I've, one of my understandings of, of the theory. kind of expecting to follow that stock yeah. all the way up. <laughs> it's like the second time we got burned. First time was when the anemone mask. So is that a precious coral or maybe a bubble gum? Or are we too deep for bubble gum? The precious coral. Let's take a look. I love how those stars snake their way through. Yeah. I think they're called snake stars, right? Some of them are. All right, Dave, go ahead and start your push-in, please. So you guys said that's not bubblegum coral? No, it's not. What would make it more bubblegummy? Um, I have a hard time telling the polyps apart, but I was told that um, the whiter bases, like that um, hold fast when it's white, is typically a uh, precious hemichorallium. Cool. They also have barrel-shaped polyps. 
Okay, I can see that. All right, full wide there, please. A little steep section here. Yeah. Let's do it this way instead. Thanks to our viewers who are tuning in. Keep sending your questions in the chat. I love these little barnacle trains that, that we see. They seem to like march in a line. Yeah, they never seem very random. Adam, a viewer would like to know if you have ever experienced an underwater earthquake or underwater volcanic eruption. Um, yeah, yes and no. So there's only been two volcanic eruptions observed in the deep sea. Uh, and I was part of a response to one of them, but... Uh, participating remotely, so I didn't get to see it in person. Uh, I know of, I'm almost 100% sure I've been subsea when an earthquake happened, but it's not something that you can really detect when you're in the water. But there was an example of a group that was out when a big earthquake hit, they were looking at a, a higher thermal vent right at that moment, and all the shrimp that were on the vent jumped off 